ready to start, we'll call this meeting of the Food and Beverage Tax Advisory Commission uh, for Monday, July 22nd to order. And would you please call the roll? Mark Bell. Here. Lenny Bush. Miss Lenny. Not present. Gretchen Knack. Here. Cheryl Munson. Here. Andy Rupp. Here. Foxy Penny Gibbons for Julie Thomas. Here. Galen Cassidy. Here. Let's roll. Thank you for uh, recalling the roll. Uh, so the first item of business we have is a uh, recommendation regarding resolution 2024-15. And how shall that best be handled? I'm happy to do that. If you'd like, I would give you a short presentation. Please do. Good afternoon. My name is Chef Underwood. I am the Controller and Assistant Treasurer for the Merrill County Capital Improvement Board. And uh, those of you that were around earlier this year, we came and, and got approval for our initial budget to be about $250,000. And that had been appropriated by the City Council last year in their budget. And this resides with uh, the city uh, and their food and beverage money, and more specifically uh, in the controller's office and controller bonus we are with us today. Uh, at that time, we said we would probably be back with a revised budget. Uh, we have presented that to the city council and come back to you today. So uh, the revised budget is $600,702. And uh, that's an additional request of $350,702. And I'll just run down the categories real quick. In uh, supplies, uh, the revised budget is a decrease of $500. Uh, in professional fees and kernel, that would be legal representation, which is Linda Robertson, and uh, controller uh, duties, which is by myself. Uh, we're asking for an increase of $32,858 uh, for legal and $6,844 for controller. Uh, earlier this year, we hired an owner's rep, J.S. Held, and had an initial budget of $50,000, and we were asking for an additional $255,000 for them. Uh, actual uh, actuarial and design fees, uh, no change. Insurance, uh, a decrease of $15,000. Uh, website uh, in the other category, a uh, decrease from $4,000 to $500, or so decrease of $3,500. And then uh, earlier this year, we selected um, uh, Well Brothers as the con uh, constructor for the new site. Uh, and they'll have uh, three construction services. Uh, in the amount of $75,000, so we added that. So a uh, revised budget of 600702 with an additional uh, request of 350702 Happy to answer any questions. The president is here as well, so John Whitehart, so happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Underwood. Uh, would anyone else from staff or Mr. Whitehart have anything to add at this time? I think I'll speak only if it improves my silence, so I'll say nothing. <laughs> So uh, before we move on to discussion or question, well, I guess we'll move to discussion and questions from uh, members of the uh, commission. So would you like a motion for the adoption so we can move right into discussion? I guess we should. Okay. <laughs> I move uh, approval of an additional 600000 Seven hundred and two dollars. That's the total. Budget. That's an additional. No, that's that's the total. Yeah, uh, additional three fifty. Right, which includes an additional three hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred and two dollars. Second. A second. And needs a seconded. Okay, now we're ready for discussion. Yeah. Between commission members or four staff or for Mr. Weikart from CIB. Well, the main issue is all about the legal fees or the or whatever professional fee. That's that's the whole reason that you're really doing it. Then, mm -hmm. so what's the backup for that? It's just extending the monies that are already allocated to the city. Is my understanding? Yeah. So this will be paid out of uh, the city share of food beverage taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be appropriated by the city council. The steps are. We go and, we, and get a resolution by the city council. Uh, they review the budget. They make a recommendation for approval that comes off back to you all. And should you give a positive recommendation, then we go back. The city will appropriate additional monies out of existing food beverage uh, tax monies on hand. 
So I guess that's the procedure. I'm just saying, let's 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 who who's going to do what for two hundred fifty thousand dollars? That might be the best question, best answered by someone from CIB. No. Yeah, I can, yeah. Can maybe explain the role of JS Held. That might be yeah. helpful. JS Held is the owner's rep. They, they're basically the uh, go between uh, the CIB and the architect and uh, Weddell Brothers. So they will help manage. They, they actually, rather than hiring staff, they will fill that role coordination with the construction as well as uh, Jim Whitlatch, who was with Bunger Robertson on the legal side, and myself. Uh, we'll provide back for that as we go through the construction, but they'll specifically manage the day to day uh, operations at the construction site. So, they're really project managers. Like project just, managers. So, yeah, first, let's like, talk about legal fees. I would like, I want to get out of that company. <laughs> <laughs> they're the project managers. Uh, other questions? So, I, ha I have a comment. Um, I think it might be helpful for everybody to know what the current um, account is uh, for the city in food and beverage tax revenue. And they have, um, they're requesting an additional $350,702. But I believe that is a small portion of the funds that are available. And we have a representative of the auditor's office that can. Uh, tell us the current amount for the. I, I can't speak for the city's bank account. I can speak to the county. Yeah. And, and I can throw it to the county. She's got the information. You've got it. The city fund balance for the food and beverage is $19.8 million. And we just received our July distribution. So we're, okay. all, we're all full for July and we'll wait another month and receive probably another $325,000 odd dollars. It's just a very small, very small drop in the bucket. Yeah. So. Uh, any other questions or comments before we ask the public, if anyone from the public would like to come, I'd like to do that. If that's uh, appropriate and that's okay. Absolutely. Anyone from the public like to make a comment or ask? Sure. Um, just to note that year to date, pre June, the first half of the year, revenues are 2% down compared year over year, which is last year, which is the third time that has happened in the history of the food beverage tax, I think, if you could lose COVID. So it's just a reminder that uh, constant increases, it's not like magic. Hmm. Thanks. Thank you for your, for your comment. Uh, anyone else in the public like to make a comment? This one suggests that when they put down professional fees, they might put a parenthesis to say, well, project cash, or because that it's a clear policy, mm -hmm. but kind of professional. It's not just generic. Yeah. Thank you. So are we ready to vote on the recommendation? Is the commission ready to vote on the recommendation? Sure. Call the question. Member Bell. I approve. Aye. Member Knapp. Approve. Member Munson. Approve. Yes. Member Ruff. Yes. Member Gibbons. Yes. Member Cassidy. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Now the next item, bond council invoice. Is this? Is there any action that needs to be taken, or is this just a? Uh, this is an update. I'd be happy to um, just explain why I'm here. If you feel like there needs to be action taken, that's fine too. Um, I, uh, as city controller, we're starting the process of getting um, the financial analysis done for like our bond coverage, and that is with this invoice as part of that. Crone and Associates does that work. And the city controller's assumption, I want to share that with you so you know how I am moving forward, if that's okay with you. We have an open contract with Crone and Associates from 2019. That's an open contract that we've held on the books and that we, is it an encumbrance? And we're able to pay from food and beverage tax as part of normal city procedures. I wanted you to know that invoices are starting to come in and we're going to start paying on that contract. It's not something that has come before you in a while, a very long time. So I want you to know that that contract exists, that it was approved in the past. Um, but that is why you haven't seen, this group has not seen a contract or a, a budget 
mm -hmm. for Crone and Associates. So this is what the invoice will look like. It will always look pretty much like this. It will always say Convention Center um, Financial Services, I think it says on it. Um, and anything that deviates from this, I mean, I would expect to, to come and talk to you about. But if that assumption is okay with, with this group, we will go ahead and continue paying these invoices as originally planned in 2019. Thank you, Mr. Wallen. Um, does uh, we have any recommendations on whether we need to take any action from staff? Well, Mr. Lucas, do you have any thoughts on that, or Mr. Underwood, uh, or maybe just a couple of follow-up questions? So this was a uh, PO that was opened in 2019 uh, using funds that were previously appropriated by the city after a recommendation from this group. It's just to, yeah, has been separated in time. Yeah, quite I think a bit. this was done about the same time as the Smith and Associates Yard deck. There was mm -hmm. a bond council, one for financial advisor, which was Crown, and one for Smith. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything without this body knowing why mm -hmm. it was being done or having any, you know, I wanted to give you an update about what's going on with spending. And maybe as a little bit more background, when Smith and Associates looked at a convergence, we went through a process to determine the the architectural design firm. And so when we say Smith, we're talking about the design firm, the architect. Um, Crone is the financial advisor that the city uses and bond council is the end of the day, I think that we're gonna come back to you or and, and say, hey, here's the project, here's the lending and here's the financials and here's how much the project's gonna cost because here's our bonding capacity. That whole thing, that's all tied together with the, with the the Cronin Associates and the Bond Council, they'll be on the team that helps look at those so that we can present, hey, here's the here's the here's the bonding amount, here's the coverage amount, and all all those kind of things. So all that was approved in 1918 era. I want to say up to like four million. Mm -hmm. Don't hold me to that, but that's the ballpark of what that approval was. So when we talk about the 19 million sitting there, just keep in the back of your mind, hey, 4 million has already been assigned to this project for those purposes for the soft cost. So where are you? What's the timeline on your, for that side of the project? For the bond council, our timeline is um, the selling bonds between December and January. So like end of quarter four, or beginning of quarter one, because we need to have funds on hand for building to start um, Early quarter two. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Scott Chin and Henley Drescher are bond council and are doing the prep now. Well, they're into it now. Yeah, if you look at the 2019 annual report and then moving forward, you'll see all those approvals and the amounts that were assigned to the vendors and the actual expenditures. You see any problems at all with these racks that were going down 2% on <laughs> your bonding? <laughs> Um, projections. I don't have the, um, they do a 12 month rolling average on mm -hmm. the last 18 or 20 months. It's been right around 4 million a year. Right. Um, and so we just can keep up this um, spreadsheet of um, ever since the tax, the inception of the tax, and we keep a really close eye on that 12 month rolling average. Mm -hmm. We ever did below 4 million. I have to, yeah. We, I have to look at rolling average because our year. auditor's office doesn't do the rolling average. But I think that's an excellent mm -hmm. approach. I would say during cold caps, it would be. Yeah. 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 Oh, it did. Everything is good. And I think we'll yeah. What the Roman Associates will put together, they'll put together. Here's your bonding amount. Here's kind of we call it coverage. They don't know how they do things. So when we're looking at, say, so a redevelopment bond, we'll want coverage to be at like mm -hmm. one and a quarter, which means for every dollar we use payout bonds, we collect a dollar and a quarter. So we have some 25% leeway anyway, anyway. So I, I don't know how they're going to structure it. I, I, yeah. That's not somebody the county has used, so I don't know how they work it. But, that, but that's when you look at that and those kind of questions, you look at the bone, when you look at their mm -hmm. coverage spreadsheets and things like that, we'll, we'll know. So if they've already got the design, has that already been in place? Design is not in place yet. No, it's not. They just up, they, they're in the process of updating the preliminary design and they'll be moving into uh, the final design. Well, so the, so the timeline between your preliminary to your final is six months? 
It's about six months. It's huge. That's huge. So I would like to comment for all of you that we uh, spent uh, several years with no progress at all, and it was it was uh, yeah. a sense of frustration both for the city and the county. And we're now moving very quickly, uh, and it's it's an exciting time to see yeah. them come together. And thanks to the CIB yeah. members for for driving this. Uh, any other discussion of the bond council invoice in the dis uh, right. process that's been laid out and described in the middle of the history? Any other questions on that? Um, any, I'll go to public again. Do you have any, uh, any members of the public want to say anything? Uh, so then with that, and with no action needed on item number four, we're ready for a motion to adjourn. I so little. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.